An atheist, if asked, who made you, will answer, well, nobody, nothing. We, as a creation, are the result of the Big Bang, which brought the universe into existence, and we are the result of evolution, which brought life into existence and the diversity of life as we know it. That is the atheist answer. But does that answer make sense? I would submit that it does not, and here is the evidence. To begin with, let's look at the Big Bang. First of all, let's understand that the Islamic religion does not have any problem with the Big Bang. Islamic religion does not deny that the Big Bang happened. The Islamic religion, however, teaches that the Big Bang was under the control of the Creator. Now, which makes more sense? For us to believe that it was a random event or that it was under the control of the Creator? To begin with, the Big Bang did not start with the explosion. The Big Bang started long before. Before the explosion, there was a primordial dust cloud, a dust cloud in the nothingness of space, which drew together as a massive, hyperdense core of mass and energy, and it was that that exploded. So, where did this dust cloud come from? Where did the primordial dust, where did the energy come from for this explosion? If there is one thing we know from science, it is that we do not get something from nothing. In the explosion, it was the greatest explosion in the history of our universe. It blew everything outward to the universe as we have it today, which is expanding as we know it. And yet we are to believe that this supposedly random event resulted in the perfection of the universe as we know it, whereas any other explosion results in destruction and chaos, we are to believe that the Big Bang resulted in the perfection of the universe as we know it. This is an example where science contradicts science. What do I mean by that? If you are going to explain the universe on the basis of science, you cannot have science contradicting the science that explains the existence of the universe. In science, there is a general principle called entropy. Entropy is the principle that unless there is a greater control over a process, the process tends to chaos. Now let's put it into real world terms. It does not matter whether you are talking about your child's bedroom, the kitchen sink, your workplace, or a complex chemical reaction. If it is not under control, it generates into chaos. If your child does not clean up his room, if somebody does not control the dishes in the sink, if somebody does not control the chemical reaction, the result is going to be random and chaos. But we are to believe that the massive explosion of the Big Bang resulted in perfection and not chaos. This is an example where science contradicts science. In the same way, when the atheists explain our existence as living beings, they use the example of evolution, natural selection. First, there was a single cell organism. From the single cell organism evolved all of life as we know it. But you know, if there's one thing that we know from our lives, it is that if you look at something, you know where it came from. If you look at a painting, you know that there was a painter. If you look at a sculpture, you know that there was a sculptor. If you know, look at a building, you know that there was an architect and a construction company. And yet we are to look at creation and think that there is not a creator. This is the proposal. The proposal of the atheist is that we evolved by natural selection with the absence of a creator. But I have a question for those who put forward this theory. 
Natural selection can explain a lot of things. It can explain the diversity of species. It can explain the fossil record. It can explain where the dinosaurs came from and where they went to. But how can you explain where the soul came from? If you believe in the existence of a human soul, how can you explain this as having evolved? For that matter, how can you explain life as having evolved? And what do I mean by life? I mean the power that gives a body, once assembled, to live. We have reached a point in science where we can transplant virtually every organ of the body. We can make a Frankenstein if we so desire, but not all of the world's scientists over the history of mankind, if you brought them all together, cannot make them live. We cannot even make the wing of a gnat in the perfection that it has been made by our Creator. And we cannot give a body life. That is why, once dead, medicine is not able to revive a dead person, even when their organs are still functioning. So, the explanation that we developed from natural selection is another example where science contradicts science. We have the example of millions of years of evolution or natural selection, and the proposal is that everything in our existence, if we don't have some control over it to keep it in order, everything degenerates into chaos, except for the Big Bang and except for evolution. Those two things, just by themselves, they tended toward perfection. Well, there are some people who accept that explanation, but I submit to you that it is not of those who are enlightened, it is not of those who have open minds or open hearts who accept that explanation. The Arabs have a story that they like to tell. A Bedouin is traveling in the desert, he comes upon an oasis, and in the oasis, there is a perfect palace. Now there are no building materials around. He finds another nomad and he asks him, where did this palace come from? And the nomad said, oh, subhanAllah, glory to be our creator, you would not believe where it came from. First, the wind blew so hard that it shaped the rocks into perfect cubes with square edges and it tumbled the rocks over the desert until they all fell together in the shape of this palace in perfect assortment. And then the wind blew the dust with some, you know, hairs and fibers from, you know, from the trees into the cracks and brought the rain and that made the cement that the cemented it all together. And then lightning strikes blasted the sand into sheets of glass and blew the sheets of glass into the windows. And then the elements took wood from the far corners of the earth and shaped it with the wind and a different force of the elements into furniture and into window trim and doors. And tornadoes and hurricanes carry it here and drop the doors into the door places, drop the windows and made the window frames, tumbled the furniture into the rooms. These strong winds took the fibers out of the backs of our sheep wove them together into tapestries and carpets and coated the floors with it. And all of this happened just in this one place on earth to make this perfect palace. You know, when we begin thinking about it, we cannot help but roll our eyes and realize, come on, this guy is, is crazy. This is impossible. And yet what we are told to believe is that the Big Bang and natural selection through the two most climactic events in the history of creation accomplished something even greater than this.